Hello, welcome to episode four, I believe, of the Turing Complete walkthrough. Getting started on the CPU architecture uh, section. So let's just get right into it with the logic engine. Okay, so we've got create a device that can or an and, <clears throat> nor or and two inputs. The third input would be the instruction. An instruction is just what we call the number that determines what to compute. Instructions or an and, nor and and. Also, you can't move the red components in this level for reasons that will be revealed later. All right, well, let's start off by decoding our instruction byte. All right, logic, we need or, nand, nor, and, or and. So if you remember, the and is just an inverted nand, and a nor is just an inverted or. So I believe, yeah, we got the byte logic there. We don't have the uh, and or nand for the bytes, though. So let me get the schematic for what a, a NAND actually is. Here we go. Or and not. So you look here, an AND gate is just two inverted inputs with an OR gate and another input, another uh, invert, or another NOT gate, technically. And the NAND gate here, it's got uh, two NOT gates for some reason. Um, you can get rid of both of these, and that's why I said in the first episode that an AND gate is just a an inverted NAND gate, rather than the opposite way around. Um, so yeah, we just need to build a NAND gate and then invert it. So let's get our two knots. And just wire that up to, uh, I believe both, yeah, both of the bytes. There we go. Or those together. Then we can put both of these into our or gate as well. That'll be for that instruction. All right now we've got two bytes here. This is our NAND gate and this is our OR gate. So let's go ahead and take a muxer to combine these two. And now we can toggle between either taking the OR uh, instruction or the NAND instruction just by turning this muxer on or off. But also, what we're going to do is we're going to take a another knot here, put it down there, wire the muxer to that, and then bring the just the original output here as well. We're going to get another muxer, connect them like this. So now when we turn this one on, on or off, it'll choose between the normal input and the not input. Uh, if you're not getting your head around this um, right now, don't worry about it. I'll explain it when it's all put together and that should be easier. All right, so what are the instruction numbers exactly? Okay, so zero is just an or. So by default, we already have that The because um, the muxers will take the middle pin by default. So that's already going through. If we send a one, we want to take this one, so we can just run that to this muxer. Let's see that. Yeah. So I don't I don't know why it doesn't show a red signal when I turn this on. It it will work though, see. I just have to remember that it, it is on. So that muxer turns on and it takes the input from the NAND gate, the NOR gate. Uh, it's next. So that means we want to take the middle pin from this muxer and the bottom pin from this muxer. 
So let's hook that up like this. So we turn that on now, it'll take it down there. And lastly, the AND. So with the AND, we want to turn on um, both. And actually that's already, um, it already works like that because it's the third instruction and binary, a three is one and one. So both of these will turn on green, which will turn on the muxers. So let's step through. All right, the first one, we want the NAND gate. You see, we are getting to 31. Um, binary, like doing the OR and type operations on bytes is slightly different um, because you're operating on an entire byte of bits. So I'm just gonna use an example. Let's say 1011 then 1100. Let's say we're running the uh, not and operation. And so you process each bit individually. So all of these ones, uh, this will be one because that's a true um, in the NAND uh, logic. One, 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 and then this one is and, so that's false. And so that would, that's what the, this, these four bits NAND together looks like. If we did uh, not, Actually, that doesn't make any sense. Not because the not is a unary operator. Just say nor. Well, each one of these have at least one, so this would just be zero 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 zero. Uh, so that's why, like, the output is gonna look different than the inputs. Um, but you can see here that two thirty one is coming out of this little NAND gate, and then it's going in here. Let's spread this out. Okay. So you can see 231 is going into this NOT gate and it comes out as 24, uh, but the muxer is taking the 231 and sending it out. 46, that is coming from the NAND gate again. All right, 254 is coming from the OR gate um, right there. Here we go, here's the AND. This is the one I wanted to see with the two pins so you got 32 coming out of here and that's coming out of here because the NAND is sending 223 and then that 223 gets inverted inside the knot which sends out the 32 and this muxer is turned on so it takes the bottom pin sends it out uh so yeah it's a nifty tight little circuit we got here Nice. All right, next up we have the arithmetic engine, which is just building on top of our logic engine. So now we got the same four instructions as before, but now we also have an addition and a subtraction. So let's get our byte adder. And if you remember how to uh, negate a a uh, a bit or not a bit a byte um then essentially you've already got sub subtraction built in because subtraction is just the addition of a negative number so if we take just our first here let's get a different color for the logic or the arithmetic part So if we take the one one byte and put it into the adder, then we can take our second byte, also run it into the adder, but also run it into this uh, negator. Let's get rid of that because we need to use a muxer now. Spread it out a little bit. This muxer will um, tell us, or it'll let us choose between um, addition and of subtraction. Because when the number goes through this negator and gets sent through into the adder, then it'll actually be performing subtraction. 
because you're just adding the negative number. All right, so what's our instruction for? That's addition. So we don't, da -da, okay. Well, we will need to get another muxer here. And that muxer will decide between either this set of logic or this set of arithmetic. Connect these up. So add four, run that down. Uh, subtract also needs to be uh, included. So if we use a AND gate for that, um, we'll actually use a switch. If you think about it, a switch is actually just an AND gate in disguise. Oops. Right, because this will only be green if both of these are green, which is the exact same truth table as an AND gate. So it's just a smaller AND gate. And now we need to get this muxer hooked up. Just run subtraction. So this is the same subtraction line. We can just run it off of this. That's pretty ugly. Run it like that. I don't like how it's covering the bite. There we go. That'll work. Um, so four needs to go to this mux here, but also, actually, we don't need the switch here. We only need the switch for the muxer. Because this will turn on in both cases for addition and subtraction. So let's go ahead, make some space there for a line. Run that to there, and then also from the one. Now it goes to the muxer. Okay, that, now we got the number coming through. Apologies for that uh, oversight. There we go. All right. Looks like it's taking us straight into the component factory. Uh, da, da, da. All right. So yeah, you just can. Uh, it's kind of like sandbox mode, but this is for making stuff that you'll actually use in your overall like completed computer. So yeah, it's uh, pretty useful. All right. Let's take a look at the registers. In this level, you need to create a circuit which can copy from a source to a destination. The instruction byte in this level determines the source and the destination. Bits 1, 2, and 3 give the destination. Bits 4, 5, and 6 give the source. Source and destination can be one of six registers. We will name them register 0 to register 5, respectively. Additionally, this map has a dedicated input component, which can be the source, and an output component, which can be the destination. These are the bit patterns for each source and destination. To get a more intuitive understanding of the requirements, click the instruction icon in the upper left corner. All right, this is uh, confusing at first, um, but once you start wrapping your head around it, it's uh, not so bad. So first of all, we're gonna make a bus. We're gonna use, I use light blue for the inputs. And I use the pink for the outputs. Wear them up. Now, a, another important part of this is that these two buses need to be connected. Let's wear that like that. Uh, they might need to be connected on the top. We'll see later. But let's just wire these up to the inputs of the registers. And then the outputs. All right. So now let's take a look at this input. Register one, two, and then output is there. So let's, uh, I think, decode this. 
Maybe we should just uh, use the decoder first. Two three bit decoders. I think it just wires one, two, four up and then eight, sixteen, thirty two. Yeah. Register one is this. So we'll just say this is zero. Uh, so register zero is just, uh, it'll be this one. It's not turning on now, but that's because, because it's not hooked up. Uh, source, okay, so source is 32, 16, and 8. Destination is 421. So that means 421 needs to be hooked up to the save pin, not, not the load pin. Which is the middle. And just do the same for the destination, except you're running on the load pins. Or, no, I'm sorry, this is the source, not the destination. Make this a different color. Let's do one after another, basically. Don't need to fiddle around with the pins. And the last one there should be output. Yes. Or not output, input. Cool. I believe that will work. Like I said, I don't remember if I need to connect the top of the bus, but uh, the bottom is necessary. As far as I remember, anyway, we'll try it out one with each. Register zero should have value zero. Okay. Oh, I didn't hook this up to the input. Start over. There we go. Right, let's try it without connecting the bottom of the bus. I'm pretty sure it's gonna fail. Yeah. Um, I haven't mastered busing yet, but so I don't exactly know why this doesn't work. Expected output 63 got zero. Oh, I can see. Because it wanted to just load straight from the source. Okay. But yeah, not too hard. I'll just do a quick, uh, quick show of it in case you want to screenshot it and then copy it over to yours all right next up is the instruction decoder so this is essentially what we are using uh in our arithmetic and logic engine so let's do that let's start with splitting this byte uh, we only need the bottom two so we want when neither of these are true, we want this one to be true, turned on. So that's just a NOR gate. I'll, uh, I'm going to put these on a bus. I'll do, I'll do this dark orange for the 64 bit. And I'll do the blue, light blue for 128. Let's hook them both up here. There we go. That's turned on. Now, calculate is when 128 is off, but 64 is on. Here, let's zoom in. So that's just a uh, 128 and not 64. So we can do 
our pseudo um, AND gate. Uh, if you remember the second tick level, this is the exact same concept. It's just one and not the other. So it is 120 or 64. 64 and not 128. Let's try that out. There we go. Exact opposite for the copy. So this will be 128 and not 64. Let's test it out. Oh, whoops. There we go. And the last one is just both. So it's just a straight switch. And it's just that easy. All right, next up is calculations. All right, so we're going into calculations, but a um, little disclaimer. Uh, I had to go back and redo all of this um, because during the calculations, my original recording, I, uh, I got confused and I messed stuff up and um, a lot of it was unusable. And essentially, like, the part where <clears throat> the first part that was usable um, was very early on in the in the challenge. Then the next part that I had to cut to, because the middle was just me trying to figure it out, um, after that was I had already built too much to really explain. Uh, so this is all going to look a little differently. Uh, mostly just this bit up here, but... Um, hopefully there's not too much of a difference and it's pretty much the same as it used to be. Oh, um, the reason I had to redo it all is because you can't reset like the calculations and the register uh, levels. They sort of like, they're all mixed into one, so I couldn't just go back and redo the level. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's get started with calculations. <clears throat> we need to add an ALU. To here, we take values from register 1 and register 2 and save them into register 3. Remember, we start counting from 0, so this is register 1, 2, 3. So let's go get our ALU. Register 1 just goes into the top. Register 2 into the bottom. The top one takes our instruction. I believe that just comes off of the main bus here. I'm going to straighten that up. All right, the output will come down into register 3. We're going to need a switch on here to prevent a short circuit. All right. Move that up. I uh, connected it to this bottom pin because... This pin will always be, it will always output, whereas the other one, you have to enable the load pin to be able to get the value out. I mean, we could do that, but there's really no reason to when this bottom pin is there for us. All right, now we need to process the uh, these um, instructions. So that is what our decoder is for. I think we can just... Pop it down here. All right. So now we want to disable all of these um, these loading and saving pins whenever we're not in copy mode. So if we're not in copy mode, then disable. Just run a not gate. I'll make this gray. Then there's our copy pin, so we'll just run that into the not gate. So now, uh, every time we're not in copy mode, these will be disabled. 
And now we just run the calculation stuff. So this bit will make, use this like light green color. Just run that down to our switch. All right, so let's see what we got. We got the ALU taking values from one and two. It puts it into three when it's in calculation mode. The op code is there. Um, I'm not sure there's much else to it. Go ahead and try to step through. Okay. Register three should have value two. All right, we have to save. That's right. So, save pin is in the middle there. Let's get an OR gate. Let's move this down. Well, actually we should move it up. So that this can fit on by. And just connect this up. All right, now let's try again. Right, there it is, 255 in the register, and it seems to be all right. Yep. All right, I'm uh, glad that worked. I spent a long time getting back to uh, this level to redo it. Um, when uh, For the rest of the video, though, it's going to go back to how it was. Um, but in the next video, we'll be working with this architecture again. Um, it shouldn't make any difference. I remade it so that it looks cleaner. Uh, so really, this uh, this is a good thing. So yeah, we'll uh, go on to the next challenge. All right, next up is the program level. The instruction input component has been removed. It has been replaced by a program component. Every tick, use the counter to load the next instruction from the program's memory. You must use the counter component you unlocked earlier for this level. All right, let's hook that up to the output. So if you may remember, I was telling you when we were making this uh, counter that why would you want to, like when you overwrite, you lose your previous number that you had counted up to. And why would you want to do that? Well, because when you overwrite, you're telling the, like that number that you overwrite is now the address of the program you're running at. And so now the counter continues from that new overwrite address and keeps going forward by one. So that's why you uh, don't mind losing that previous value. Okay, so increment and overwrite, overwrite value. Did it tell me I need to? Did I need to use the overwrite? I don't believe so. So I think, yeah, it just wants me to increment through it. But we will uh, later implement an overwrite. So let's go. All right, let's take a look at the conditions level. I had to uh, mess around with this one to make sure I fully understood it and could explain it well enough. And I feel like I can. So this level has a value input and three condition inputs. The three bits select the condition is shown below. Check the value against the selected condition and now put green if it is satisfied and red otherwise. So if we take a look at this, these are essentially just opposite. So whenever um, it's just this bit is on, then we turn on, or if it's not, then we don't. Uh, one thing that's annoying is that this bit on the left is actually this bit on the right. Um, which is very annoying. But anyways, let's go ahead and split these apart. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to combine all these bits with NOR gates. And so if I can find it, there it is. So if all these are true, if we connect these up to... Uh, their own pins, then that means the value is zero. So that's uh, one of our tests here. We're going to just focus on the first half, 
and then the second half will just come naturally because these are essentially opposite. So let's finish hooking these up. Then we'll use AND gate, our colloquially known as switches, to combine those. Uh, there we go. All right. So now this will be green when all of these are uh, red. Next, um, we just have to work on the actual comparison part. So whenever this bit uh, like turns on on its own, then we know that that bit just gets passed through. So what we can do there is use a exclusive OR gate and just wire that pin to it. I'm going to route it around the outside just to stay out of the way. There we go. Let me turn it back off. <clears throat> okay, so if this first pin is on, then we output true if the value is zero. But we know that when this pin is on and this pin is on, then that's when we output zero for that case. So let's go ahead and get a switch there. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'll just route it up like this. Uh, get it out of the way a bit. I'll even color code it. Okay. So now that will be true when the output is zero. Next up is when this bit is on, then we want to be true when the value is less than zero. Well, if we're using sign notation, we know that Whenever this last bit is on, we're going to be negative. So we can just run an AND gate. I'll move these out a bit. From this uh, negative pin, the signed bit. To this pin. So now uh, we know it's going to be negative. Now we can just combine these two with an OR gate. Put that into our exclusive OR gate. And I think that's actually about it. Let's test um, various circumstances. All right, so we've got the middle bit is turned on. So if it is less than or equal to zero, it should be green. So we are less than zero. Let's see if we are zero. Okay, turned off. Let's see what we're missing. Da, da, da. Or actually, I've misunderstood this, I believe. Ah, so it's less than or equal to zero when both of these bits are turned on. So there we go. That's better. Never is, uh, never is never, always is always, equal to zero. Okay, so let's turn this bit on, and then this should turn on, because um, it'll be true when it is not equal to zero. There we go. So the reason that turned off is because uh, this entire section is uh, zero, which means this is turning on. So this is turning on our AND gate, uh, which is going through into our exclusive OR gate, and it is turning off this signal from the 4. And so it's just like sort of naturally inverted because if you remember, the XOR gate is a toggleable NOT gate. So yeah, it's a nifty bit of logic going on in here. And I'll I'd uh, be happy to try to clarify anything. If um, you have a question, leave a comment, and I'll try to explain it. Let's uh, move on.
All right, one level before our working computer, immediate values. We need a way to directly move numbers from our program into registers. For this, we use the immediate mode when the two highest bits are off. When in immediate mode, the whole byte is interpreted as a number that we save into register zero. This means we can save any value between zero and 63. So immediate is this top one. And in that case, I believe we just use a switch, a byte switch. We'll give this the, um, let's just do this green color. So connect that to the bus. And then when we're immediate, we run this bit down turn on the switch uh, we also need to turn this on so we can use or gate it's no nice way to fit this in here but we'll manage and run our bit up to there yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Now we can just run our byte from the bus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to just a normal blue. It'd be much easier to see everything that way. All right, I think that's all we need to do is just putting value straight into register zero when we're in immediate mode, which turns on the switch and turns on the load pin. All right, let's give it a run. And just like that. All right, let's uh, move on to the working computer. Until this point, all possible programs have been confined to running in order byte by byte. Before, only code could influence memory. Now, memory must influence code. With the addition of conditional logic, our computer can run any algorithm and calculate anything calculable. The final thing we need to add is a mechanism for changing the program counter through instructions when certain conditions are met. When the two largest bits are green, we are in condition mode. In condition mode, the value in register 3 is compared against the conditions defined by the lowest three bits in the instruction. If the condition is true, we overwrite the counter to the value in register 0. Conditionally changing the counter means we can skip instructions based on conditions or have instructions run in a loop. There's our conditions. These conditions correspond to the condition component that was saved in the component factory. So it's our... Where is it at? That is an ugly-ass component, but we'll make do. Oops. Okay, where should we put the program? I don't really like it being here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Alright, so condition. This outputs just a, a bit. So that'll go to our overwrite pin. Tells it to overwrite. Uh, it takes a value from register zero, so we just run a line from there. We'll use yeah, yellow, I guess. Take it from that pin. There we go. It takes the condition and an input. So the condition is... Okay, so that just comes from the bus. That's just uh, like that, wrong color. Bottom one. Move it over. And the input, what exactly is the input again? 
It's just a number. Uh, oh, okay. Um, this comes from register three. That's right. So <clears throat> we'll use uh, not quite yellow, but close. All right, I think that's about it. Um, no, next tick the counter value B zero, it should be one. So why isn't this loading? Oh, I ran it from the wrong register. There we go. I ran it off a of register one instead of a zero. Start over. Still got an issue. Is... Oh, I never ran the uh, condition bit. Okay. Yeah, if all, of the, if all the bits are off on the top, then it'll never be on. So we can just disable, disable that top one with a switch. And that switch is connected to this pin. It's not gonna be nice. There we go. Okay, so that... <clears throat> The condition pin turns on, then it turns on the switch, which turns on the condition component. All right, let's see. There we go. And just like that, we have a Turing complete machine. Yay. All right, so that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, the next one, we're going to look at these programs. Uh, the maze might be our our last level uh for the walkthrough so i hope you've been uh keeping up <laughs> and uh feel free to leave a comment if uh, something was unclear i'll try to clarify and uh yeah thank you for watching